Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there's so much that can be said on this great and glorious day, this beautiful feast of Pentecost, 50 days after our Lord's resurrection, the Sunday, the day of the Holy Spirit, and the revelation of the Holy Spirit comes upon us. There's so much that can be said. But let's draw our attention to just three, three things, three things today. First of all, to remember that we too, we too have received the Holy Spirit. All of us who have been baptized and chrismated into Christ's Holy Church have received the Holy Spirit. And this morning we had the special joy of uniting two more of our brothers in Christ to the Church through the sacrament of the Holy Spirit, Holy Chrismation. We recall also the prayers of the Anaphora at the consecration of the gifts. And a lot of times you, you can't really hear this, but if you listen closely, uh, right, right before the consecration, the priest prays, celebrant prays, send down that Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here offered. Holy Spirit descend not just upon the, the bread and wine that become the body and blood of Christ, but upon all of us. Every liturgy in the sense of the Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is present and alive in the church, guiding her into all truth throughout the ages. And not just in the church as a whole, but in each and every one of us. So the first thing to remember and cultivate is this awareness that we too have received the Holy Spirit. Second, because we've received the Holy Spirit, that means that God dwells within us. And therefore, the words of Jesus are fulfilled in us. The kingdom of God is within you. Within you and within me. We don't need to go looking for God in some faraway place. Our journey to God, to eternity, union in life with Him is not something that happens externally. And pilgrimages are nice, by the way, for a whole lot of reasons. But we don't need to go somewhere afar off to meet God. The journey begins by going deeper and deeper within my own heart to seek God who is present there. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says our Lord in the book of Revelation. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. And this is something that we experience most deeply and must cultivate through that prayer in secret, in the closet of our heart with the door shut, repenting before God, praising Him, thanking Him, and interceding for others before Him in that secret place of the heart. But it doesn't just happen by hoping, or reading, or knowing what I ought to do. Rather, I have to make this a priority in my life every day, to set aside the time to seek God within, to pray with Him in secret. So again, we receive the Holy Spirit, and we remember that God dwells within us. Third and finally, remember that we let us remember that we're called to labor and live by the Spirit. We're called to labor and live by the Spirit. Just as the Holy Spirit directs and guides the church throughout the centuries, if we're really living as Christians, the Holy Spirit must also become the guide and director of my life. We're to set aside our cunning and our wisdom and to live by the Spirit. But what does this mean? St. Paul warns us neither to grieve the Spirit nor to quench the Spirit. We know what grieves the Spirit. It's when we willfully sin, when unclean or unkind words, thoughts, or actions find a place within us. We also remember how Jesus... Oh, but repentance, on the other hand, brings joy, brings the joy to the Lord and fills us with His grace. We also remember how Jesus advised His disciples that when we are brought not just then, but when we are brought before kings or governors, or brought to trial, not to carefully reason out beforehand what to say, but to allow the Holy Spirit to give us the words. We too must let our witnessing, our conversations, we're called upon in countless different ways to be guided, to be guided by the Spirit. Indeed, to let our whole lives, every moment, every encounter, every interaction, to be guided by the Spirit. How might that be? Let's, let's, uh, let me share a short story from the book of Acts. We know that St. Paul was zealous to preach the gospel everywhere. But sometimes his plans weren't God's plans. But he, however, he was open and receptive to this and didn't try to force his own way. We have this interesting, interesting account here. 
It says that now when Paul and Timothy had gone from Phrygia, to the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. And after that, they came to Mysia, and they tried to go into Bithynia, so they tried to go somewhere else too. But the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. Now I think we would say that if they really forced the issue, if St. Paul had really wanted to go to Asia and said, I'm going, he could have gone, and it wouldn't be blessed. But what was being, what's being indicated here is an awareness of living by the Spirit. That that door was not the one God was opening to them, but God was saying, no, I have plans for you elsewhere. Why did the Spirit, why did the Spirit prevent them? We don't know. We don't know. God knows. But we do know that God knew what was most needful for St. Paul and for those yet to hear the Gospel. Have you ever experienced something like this, of planning everything out perfectly so it seems, and yet somehow or other, it doesn't work out. There's God's blessings that not, not upon it. I want to share a story with you. Again, I think I may have shared it with some of you recently. It was from this year, but it's a good one, I think, to this, to this effect. As you, as you, as you know, we're, we're beginning this work on this first phase of our building program, and one of the preparatory things that we needed to do was to get a soil survey. That means we had to get drillers out to go look down deep into the ground, make sure the foundations are solid, and to see what it is that we're, you know, what, what we're building on and how, the, how to move the dirt and so on. And, and so, um, and when, you're, when you're going to drill a deep hole, you want to be very sure not to hit a pipe. That's an, that's an important thing, right? And so, of course, we, we do we do tend to do our homework, right? You, you, uh, you, you especially don't want to hear, you can hit an electric line or gas line or water line. You don't want to hit any of those. So we call the utility company, and they tell us what they say. They were you know, terribly helpful, but they did what they did. So we need to hire a professional pipe finder. So we hired a professional pipe finder who came out with all of his tools and spray painted all the lines down, different colors for different types of pipes. We pulled out all the old, all the old charts that we could find from the hall, dusted them off to really look for where they were. And it seemed like everything we did, we did everything, right? We did all of our homework. We went, the day was going well. They were drilling four holes, and the first three, you know, no problems. They dig, they dig down, they get, they get their dirt and rocks, and um, everything's, everything's going well. Well, of course, the, 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 in the fourth and final hole, lo and behold, as soon as, soon as he starts to put the drill down, the water starts, water starts shooting up. We hit a pipe. And uh, so, of course, after quite a bit of effort, we had to go and find, find the shutoff valve, uh, pail, pailing out lots of water, uh, well, you know, T Tony and Jack running to the hardware store to get parts, and, and here we are after, after some time of, of dealing with this. Meanwhile, the drillers went, they just moved over 10 feet and drilled the whole <laughs> perfectly fine spot. Um, and uh, so after quite, quite a bit of work, you know, Jack is here, he is re ready to put in the, the, the repair pipe piece, and it's kind of got it all ready to go into place and measure things out. And he, and he, tur and he turns to, to two of us who are standing by and says, now let's say a prayer that this fits. <laughs> You better believe it said a prayer. <laughs> and it fit. And it fit. But it was at that moment, that moment, that I, I was really convicted in my heart. Because here it was, the Orthodox priest, where I'd done all these preparations, but I didn't pray. I didn't ask God's blessing that day. And I, I realized at that moment that I could do all of the preparations, but I, did, I did, forgot to pray and ask, ask God's blessing. Well, that, was, that was such a reminder, I think such a reminder for us especially for our building program, but for everything, everything in, in, our, in our life. Um, and uh, so, brothers and sisters, we can try, we can live every moment by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. And how again, each day, we begin the day by asking God's blessing, asking God to guide us, not just to take it for granted, but to ask Him. When we begin our work to make the sign of the cross, ask Him to bless us and to, and to help us, to guide us. We pray and pray, O Heavenly King, to the Holy Spirit. But we can ask God to bless all of our encounters and interactions, to give us words to speak. And this is important sometimes. Before we just uh, say what we want to say or, or answer when someone comes to us, to say a quick prayer in our heart. Lord, give me the words. Give me the words. And if we do that, He will. He will. Um, or let my words be worthy of you. We can pray, Lord, save me. When we're tempted, we're in a tough spot. And believe and know that He will save you. That's the key. We pray it and we believe it and know it by the Spirit who dwells within us. We can pray, Lord, guide me, when we don't know what to do. And we often don't know what to do. But pray, Lord, guide me, Lord, direct me, and believe and know that He will guide you. 
Let us always remember that we too have received the Holy Spirit and strive to live by the Spirit, by faith, asking and trusting the Lord to guide us in all things. To Him be all glory, honor, and worship, together with the Father from everlasting and only begotten Son, the Holy Trinity, one in essence and undivided, now and ever and unto ages of ages.